looking at the rules, the questions overall are looking at what three-dimensional shape will be produced from a two-dimensional pattern. So this is opposite some of those early sections where you're looking at a 3D shape and how it could be represented in 2D. This time you're going from 2D to 3D. Either way though, it'll always have a pattern presented on the left and then figures on the right. Now these figures could vary in their shape and size, but they can also vary in the pattern or shading that they exhibit. In fact, you might even see a mixture. So your task here is not only to identify what shape you'll get, but also exactly what it will look like in terms of how the individual pieces will line up relative to one another. Now just like all the other questions, there's of course only one correct answer. So don't worry about having to decide between two answers that are both right and which one's better, there will only ever be one that's correct. Additionally, note that the flat pattern is representing the outside of the figure which means that you'll need to actually fold this pattern into the page or into the screen. This is the opposite of how you'll fold the paper for hole punching. However, if you were to try to fold this paper towards yourself, you'd actually then accidentally hide the pattern on the inside. So looking at this figure, you can see how the middle portion is shaded. If you were to fold that towards you, the middle portion would actually be hidden inside and you wouldn't see the shading. Additionally, if you were to try to visualize this, you'd actually end up creating a mirror image, which is not what you're looking for. So even if this pattern did double on both sides, you don't want to have that mirror image by folding up towards you. So again, these questions are folded into the page. Now, of course, this varies slightly because once you've started folding into the page, then some pieces will then fold sideways and then eventually towards you. But still, the basic way of thinking about it is that all the edges individually will fold into the page away from you. That's it for the rules. So let's go ahead and talk about the strategies for these. Just like the other subsections, you'll want to focus on the minute details rather than the entire figure as a whole. So you'll really want to zoom in and just look at the important pieces, whatever jumps out at you. And at Kaplan, we've categorized those into three different main features. The first one is a unique shape. So in this example, you can see the unique shape here is not the rectangles. Rectangles, boxes, squares, these are all pretty common. But instead that H kind of pattern, or the backward H. So that's a unique shape. And looking at the answer choices, you can see that not all of these actually create the same 3D figure. In fact, all four are different. So in this situation, if you say, okay, I see that unique H pattern here, and I know it must also be in the answers, well, you can already narrow down and pick the correct answer to be C. Notice C is the only one that matches that unique H shape. A and B are taller and more squeezed together. D doesn't even have that upper portion. C is the only one with that correct face, so you're already done. So notice we didn't have to think about how that connected with everything else. If there was shading, we wouldn't have had to look at it. The only thing you needed to identify was that, yes, this has the H shape. It's the only one that does so, so you're done. Other questions, though, will all result in the same shape. In that case, your next step is to look for unique shading. So something that's rather different from all the rest, or that you can really jump out and see, hey, I can actually see this, this is important, this is obvious. So unique shading could come in very specific patterns. So maybe there's a striped pattern or a polka dot pattern. Or it could come in the form of exactly what relationships you see. So here we can see there are a staircase set of shapes. And these have different shading in terms of what's shaded and what's not shaded. So looking at your original figure, you can see that we have these two shaded and two non-shaded groups together. And in fact, these are always easier to identify than anything else. So for example, you can see the staircase there on the right hand side has a shaded back and a shaded square, which actually ends up being the top piece. So if you're looking at the answer choices, you can say, hmm, can I see one? that has the shaded staircase and has a shaded top piece. And in fact, C does. Now, just because it has it doesn't mean the entire figure is right, though. So you would have to check everything else in terms of shading. However, we can see that that top shaded 
uh, square is connected with two unshaded squares, and that matches up here. It's the only answer choice that looks close, so we definitely know that this one must be correct. So here, we're able to identify unique shading to figure out that C is right. Now sometimes these patterns won't be quite as obvious. There may be some shading, but you may not be able to see exactly how it lines up. There may be some unique pieces, but all the answer choices have those pieces. In that case, it's important to use a key landmark instead, which combines together these kinds of ideas. So you'll narrow down to focus on one particular piece, and then see what relationships it has. So for this one, we can see again that same kind of stair-step pattern, but you know, again, it's not as easy to see exactly what's going to be what. You could do some initial elimination of based on, okay, I've got these pieces that either have one dot in the middle or one dot in the top and the bottom, but all the answer choices actually fit that. So they all actually have these kinds of shading. So instead of using the shading, we're going to have to rely on a landmark. So we'll pick out one specific point that actually has everything we're looking for. So here we can actually see that D is the correct answer. Because if you pick out that front piece, so in the original pattern, the right-hand staircase, you can see that that has the dot in the middle. And the top of that figure, so where that's connected to, is an unshaded square. Looking at the answer choices, only D represents that, so we're already on the right track. You can then verify by following down the staircase that it should alternate between shaded, not shaded, shaded, not shaded, and again, D does match this, so D is the correct answer. So by using multiple pieces and seeing their relationship to one another, what's close to something that looks unique can actually help you to narrow down and find the correct answer. Using all three of these key ideas will allow you to quickly narrow down to the correct answers. You won't need to visualize what 3D figures are created in their entirety. Instead, you can simply find the pattern that matches and get to the answers much more quickly.